And a great example of a compound with conformational isomers is Cl CH2 CH2 Cl. And go ahead and draw these chlorines out in red, just like I did, and you'll see why when we're going through our example, okay? Oh, hey, if you wanted to draw this out in the line angle form, this would look like this. And let me draw this side by side. So this is the traditional form. This equals the line angle form. So here's one carbon. Here's one carbon, this carbon. Here's the other carbon right here. And sticking off of these two carbons, we have a chlorine here and a chlorine there. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the different types of conformations that this compound can be in. And I took the liberty of assembling this compound with my model set also to give you a more 3D perspective on what this compound actually looks like. Okay, so hey, if you compare this model that I've built to the structure that we've drawn up here, then here's the two carbons in the middle. So this carbon is here, this carbon is here, and hey, the two chlorines are also sticking off of those carbons. Here's this chlorine, here's this chlorine. Okay, and hey, just because I didn't draw out the hydrogens for each carbon on the line angle method doesn't mean they're not there, right? But you can see these hydrogens explicitly on the model that I built. And let me zoom in for you so you can get a closer look. Okay, so here's the two carbons in the middle, right? This carbon is this carbon, this carbon is this carbon, and here's the two chlorines sticking off of those carbons, right? And hey, here are the hydrogens on each one of those carbons that are implied on the line angle method. Okay, so right now, we've got three ways of visualizing this compound so far. We've got the traditional way, the line angle way, and then the model that I just built. These are three ways to represent the exact same thing, the same compound. But hey, if that already wasn't enough, I've got a fourth way for you to visualize this compound, and it's called a Newman projection. And we use Newman projections to help see conformational isomers more clearly, okay? So, hey, let's write this down. Okay, so we're going to use Newman projections. Use Newman projections to clarify bond conformations. To clarify bond conformations. Okay, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. Okay, so just to recap. The goal here with conformational isomers is to be able to tell exactly where these bonds and atoms are with respect to one another, because bonds and atoms in one orientation can be higher or lower in energy than bonds in another orientation, okay? So why now are we introducing another way to represent this compound? Wasn't it enough to draw these compounds out the traditional way? And if that wasn't enough, we had the line angle way, right? So why make us learn how to use Newman projections now? Well, let me first tell you that no, drawing compounds the traditional way or the line angle way isn't enough to accurately see bond conformations. It's hard to see how bonds are oriented by looking at either of these representations, okay? And what I mean is, say you look at this line angle drawing. You see a chlorine here, you see a chlorine here you know that they're sort of pointing in opposite directions, right? But it's really hard to tell how many degrees are actually separating them. Like, are they 180 degrees apart? Are they 150 degrees apart? This drawing doesn't really tell you much about their exact orientation. And that's why we're going to be using these things called Newman projections. So let me show you one of these Newman projections, and then I'll tell you how it works. All right, so to draw a Newman projection, you first draw a circle, then put a big dot in the center. Then have three lines extending from the dot, like this, one, two, three. 
then have three more lines extending from the outer circle. So one, two, three, like that. Okay, cool. So let's break down what this means. Because basically what's going on is, this guy Newman, he got really frustrated with the line angle drawing because he couldn't tell the exact orientation of the bonds. And he wanted to be able to tell exactly how these chlorines were oriented with one another, how many degrees separated them. Okay, so what he did was, he's like, all right, here's the problem. If I look at this line angle drawing straight on, like you guys are right now, I can't tell exactly how these chlorines are aligned. But if I was able to look at this compound from the side, then I could see exactly how many degrees are separating those two chlorines, okay? Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so Newman was like, I'm just gonna look at this compound from the side, all right? So, hey, I'm gonna draw an eye right here. There's an eye. There's his eyebrow, there's his nose, and there's his mouth, okay? This is where Newman was looking from. He was looking in this direction. Okay, so if you pretend that you're looking at this compound from the side, you would see this carbon in front. So let me go ahead and erase this. So you would see this carbon in front, this carbon in front, so if you were looking at this compound from this direction, here's your line of sight. You're going to see this carbon in front and this carbon directly in back of this carbon. So Newman just said, all right, let me just represent this front carbon with a dot. Okay, so he makes this front carbon be represented by a dot. And this carbon right in back of it with a circle. Like that. Okay, so if you look back to our Newman projection that we started to draw, you'll realize that, hey, that dot in the center represents this front carbon. And this circle around that dot represents this back carbon. And each of these lines extending from the dots and the circles just represents bonds connecting these carbons to other atoms. Okay, so, hey, to complete our Newman projection, let's fill in these other atoms that are connected to these, this front and back carbon, okay? Okay, so on this front carbon, we've got a chlorine pointing in the upward direction. So I'm going to put a chlorine on this front carbon, this dot on the bond that's pointing up. So let me put a chlorine on this bond that's pointing up. And hey, we've also got a chlorine bonded to the back carbon, and this chlorine is pointing down, all right? So hey, on our Newman projection, I'm going to put a chlorine on the back carbon, the circle, on the bond that's pointing down, okay? So let me put a chlorine right here. And hey, let's not forget the hydrogens that are attached to these carbons. Remember, there's two hydrogens on each of these carbons, even though we don't draw them out in the line angle method. But hey, we wanna make sure to fill those hydrogens in in our Newman projection, so let's do that now. And we've got two hydrogens on our front carbon, our dot, so let's fill that in. A hydrogen bonded to the dot here and also the dot here, which is just the front carbon, right? So, hey, this front carbon, this front carbon is bonded to a chlorine, a chlorine, and also two hydrogens, but we don't draw them out in the line angle method, right? And hey, we've also got two hydrogens on our back carbon, our circle, so let me draw a hydrogen connecting to that circle there and one on this bond also. And cool, you guys, you've just drawn out your very first Newman projection. Good job. This is just another way of representing this compound, except now you can clearly see exactly how these chlorines are oriented with one another in terms of degrees. And we can see that these chlorines are pointing in exact opposite directions from one another and their bonds are 180 degrees apart. So these chlorines are going to be bonded 180 degrees apart. And it was difficult to see this in our line angle drawing, but it's perfectly clear in our Newman projection. Do you guys see that? 
But hey, if you're having trouble imagining how this line angle drawing translated to this Newman projection, then let me help you visualize how this works by using models, okay?